thanks for having me. So yeah, this is me in Dallas with my, my 10 gallon hat, painting my own bike lane there. Uh, this is what Texas is known for a little bit of bootstrap economy, you know, and, and getting things done ourselves. Um, I didn't start that way though. As Rick was mentioning, I'm, I'm an urban planner. I've worked for about a decade uh, for municipalities and as a consultant, and I help write manuals on Oh, I mean, engineer talk like context sensitive design or complete streets or a number of things. And uh, I've done a lot of those designs um, from a desk, right? But I never actually painted one of these or gone out and constructed one. And I met this guy. And this is my, my business partner in Team Better Block. It's Jason Roberts. He was an IT guru and a, uh, he's in a band called the Happy Bullets. And if, if you want to stay up on that rockin', you can go on Pandora and find his band there if you want to hear it. Uh, but I meet this guy, and he's talking about bringing back the streetcar to Oak Cliff. And I live in Dallas, Texas, uh, and I live in the south part of Dallas, which is the bad part of town. It was always in the news as, uh, you know, there was someone shot or something bad happened, and not a particularly great part of town, but it had great history to it, and I had great people that I'd met there, and we had formed a community. And Jason's walking around with these maps, and he's like, this is the old streetcar system, and they pulled it up in the 50s, and we gotta bring back the streetcar system. And so he's talking to me, an urban planner, and you know, my default is, okay, well, let's set a plan here, in two years, we'll start the environmental assessment, and we'll start drawing out these plans, and we need to find funding, you know? And I had it all laid out for him. That guy went home that night and made a website about it. It made it look real official, you know? It's got like the Oak Cliff Transit Authority. And I think that's a kid, uh, that's probably a, a, a European style, but you could have had, you know, one from Toronto up there or something. It looked real official. It had board and history, and you know, you could sign up as a member on this thing, you know? And he sends it to me, and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, we haven't even figured this out yet. But it landed in the newspaper, like, that week. Because they picked it up on his Facebook, you know. And so here's the first sentence. It says, dreaming of the day of the streetcar return. That's what uh, Oak Cliff's future could very well be tied to a trip to the past. That's what Jason Roberts and other members of the recently formed Oak Cliff Transit Authority are hoping. There were no other members. It was Jason. He knew how to make a website, you know. But what I learned from this is sometimes you just have to get going on these projects. And you don't have to know everything when you get started. If you have the motivation, if, you, if you're passionate about something, you're gonna be a leader, for one thing. Jason was passionate about being, bringing the transit, uh, the streetcar back, the trolley, and he became the leader. And then the right people started coming around. We found, uh, we found people that were engineers. We found folks that were developers. And we actually applied for one of the first grants that the Obama administration put out there for the new way they were going to do transportation called the Tiger Grant. And we won. <laughs> a community-led streetcar system, and we won it. And it's under construction right now. The first line of it is going in. And he just made a website. <laughs> but we figured out, we knew we had enough smart people in Dallas that we could figure it out as we went along. And we really did have a good story about linking jobs to a neighborhood that was in need of transit. Um, but we were stumbling on ourselves at first to, to try and figure out some of the hard things because we had to go over an old bridge that had actually been built for streetcar, but it never had one. And so everyone was afraid, like, oh, that it's just going to crumble. But we got some of the city officials to sign off and say, if it does, we'll figure it out. It's been great. The bridge is holding up great. It was made for it. Now it's being, it's being put in. So um, we, were, we had the streetcar going. And then we're like, he's still carrying these maps around. <laughs> and he's looking at, Jason says, hey, well, everywhere that there's one of these turns, and we were riding our bikes around looking when we were planning out the streetcar, there were these neat old buildings. And we'd seen one of them. This was the old streetcar that was there that's been ripped up. And the old streetcar stop on the top, and it had just been disbanded, disbanded because the zoning in place didn't work, there was no parking, and the transit wasn't there. But we had some owners come in, and they named, gave it a name. They called it the Bishop Arts District, and they got about a $2 million project to, uh, to reinvent the streetscape. 
and got some good owners that said, no more corporate, we're just going to get some locals in there. And we saw this as a great success. And then we saw there's these all around Dallas, these old streetcar stops that had become way too automobile orientated. So this was a one-way pair, actually. And great buildings, but just not much going on. But our friends had started the Oak Cliff Bicycle Company because we were taking our name back in Oak Cliff because it was always associated with something bad. So we just started calling everything Oak Cliff. You know, so Oak Cliff Transit Authority, Oak Cliff Bicycle, bike-friendly Oak Cliff. I mean, we just, everything that came out, and now like every restaurant that comes out in our town is Oak Cliff something. So we took our name back, you know. They were actually in there illegally because that, that building was zoned industrial because the city didn't know what to do with it. There's no parking. Um, there, uh, there was residential proximity, all this, you know, planning -y stuff. And uh, we got even a little further, and here's those codes that we were talking about. And I found these now all across the, uh, the U.S. I don't know if they've infiltrated Canada, but things like sidewalk flowers, that you have to pay a fee for those. Awnings and arcades, every awning that you had had to have a, a permit for it. It was $1,000 per awning, so <laughs> per year in Dallas. Street cafes, they were this complicated market value times 85% times 12%. I don't even, I mean, I'm a planner and I couldn't figure out what that was. And sidewalk for display merchandise, you couldn't do that. You couldn't even have a crowd on the sidewalk legally in Dallas. So like three people talking, you're breaking the law. <laughs> I don't know if they were really enforcing these, but it definitely wasn't an invitation for it. And um, so what we said was, yeah, let's just break all those over a weekend, right? So we took that street, we put it on a diet, we took it down to one lane for cars and we added uh, a cafe on one side and bicycle infrastructure on the other. And so we did it all with our friends and we borrowed and we built it together. We had to use, we had to use hay bales because, you know, that's what we have in Texas, right? <laughs> hay bales. You borrow, you have things in your community that you can use for these. This was the first bike lane in Dallas. <laughs> it was a block. <laughs> and we're like, we're going to paint green. <laughs> and it's going to look like we're well, from Europe, you know? <laughs> And so we invited all our city staff, yeah, out to this. We invited our council members, and we invited property owners, and, and uh, we worked with them. We said, what? we can't just build this infrastructure. We, we don't even have anywhere to, where are we going to walk to? The insurance agency or something that's on this block? You know, you gotta, we need something to walk to, because public and private has to work together to make these places whole. And so we, these buildings were not suited for cafes, so we just made an art installation of what a cafe would be. Here it is. And so there was no copy being made there. We would like Berlin airlift it on our bicycles over there, you know, in, in carafes and sell uh, coffee. And then uh, we took an old garage and made it into a kid's art studio because you got to have stuff for kids. And then we, we took this uh, small building and made it, and these, these ladies made it into a wigwam. It's one of the coolest gift shops you'll ever see. And we activated the place overnight, over a weekend, with very little money. Uh, and we used a, a, a process that the city already knew about, special event permit process, right? You can have a parade. That's what we just did this, but we didn't close the street. They took notice. Dallas City Council said, I don't know why we have these on the books for so long. The council members were bringing it up at every council meeting. Why are we not inviting uh, uh, small businesses to do this kind of thing? Why aren't we allowing for activation of, our point, uh, of parts of town? And they started changing the laws. A little secret. This is how the city was paying for their staff for planning, through fees. So we had to get into human resources. We had to figure out a new way to plan, pay for our staff now. So instead of charging developers on the front end, we had to start finding ways to give tax revenue back in to pay for staff. Surprise to us, one of those pop-up businesses, the ones that were just supposed to last for the weekend, it stayed. And it's been there now for two years. No, four years. Oh my gosh, four years now. And it's expanded and it's become the learning center, really, for Oak Cliff, it was named in Dallas the best place to start a revolution. Because <laughs> you can learn how to craft weed there and make beer and, and uh, build pallet furniture, you know, all in one place. And so that was in April. And in Dallas, in April, it's like here in May, June. You know, it's beautiful, temperature's perfect, the birds are chirping and everything. But in September, it is a desert and <laughs> it's hot. And so we chose a location, a state highway that um, just, I mean, there's no trees. It had the great building form, you know, to it for Texas. This is great building form, by the way. 
It had a pole over here with nothing on it. I don't know why. It's, you know, it had a parking lot that it kind of started taking over. And we said, we worked with a SWA group, a landscape architecture firm, and we said, we've got to totally reinvent this street. They were going through major zoning changes in this. We we're trying to get the street changed. No one could get on board with what was happening. They didn't understand why. Why do you want to change the state highway? It's perfect the way it is. And so we did. Over a weekend, we borrowed 60 trees and 100 bushes and realigned the street with streetscaping. You know, and it's like you wake up Saturday morning to go get your paper, and this is what you see. And you're like, where is this place? And we took that pole, you know, that had nothing on it, and we put bikes on it because we'd become the bike part of town, you know? So we made a, a homage to that. And we took those parking spaces that were hot, and we made the shade, and we put cafe tables out there in amazing, in 100 degree Fahrenheit weather. Dallas sites set down, and we couldn't get them to leave. We broke all the myths about that. Everybody's got bad weather at some point or other, but if you make these little microclimates, it'll work. And we painted our own crosswalks. You're not supposed to do that. Don't do that. That's, <laughs> it's not allowed. And here's those trees. Yeah, they were going to a hotel, and we were just like, hey, can they fall off the truck for a few hours here, you know? <laughs> and they're great. I mean, they just kept coming off. I love this picture, because we had all these um, renderings in our city of new development coming in, you know? And we started getting, like, rendering fatigue. It was like, I think like the last developer would just take the, 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 the rendering from before and just add more people in it, and oh, maybe a balloon here, you know, or something. And, and no one understood, why, why are we talking about walkability in Dallas? I'm gonna drive my car, you know? And they got it after this, because they rode their bikes. They walked out of the neighborhood. They came to it, and that's a real picture. Those are real bikes from my neighborhood. And people started interpreting and giving language to the city that they'd never had before. And this kid, it's a tree, you know? <laughs> Why is that here? <laughs> and I really, I started, my mom, uh, she never understood what I did as an urban planner. I was like, well, I'm planning, and there's things 25 years in the future, and you'll see, you'll see, mom. And when she came to this, she got it. She's like, oh, you're creating the sewing circle. You're creating the gathering part, and we're creating the place where we, where uh, people come together, and, and I was just like, ah, I didn't, I don't have to explain what I do anymore. People just got it, and they got it without changing the zoning at first. They got it without new infrastructure. They got it out of tradition and just making common sense changes. So this is a building, actually this is about a block off the better block there in uh, September 2010, and you can see it has bars and windows, very unkept, you know? After the better block, they got it. No notice on the window to do this, no economic incentive. They said it's good to do pedestrian oriented front door. And they learned out of tradition, and, they, and they've even changed this now a few times how they've done it, but uh, they got it. They built, started building a tradition of that. The same thing here, you know, that mirrored glass on the, uh, this is before the better block, and you're like, what's behind that mirrored glass? You know, is, is it yoga or maybe? But, and then afterwards, a really good retailer came in there, beer and wine. And I mean, not just like a chain store, but this is a person that came out of the neighborhood that now gives every time the kids want to do a bike ride. He's a supporter of the community. And it's like, this was the best real estate uh, 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 searching we could do. We found the right person to be there. So it's not just building a building, it's building the character behind it. The city of Dallas took notice again. They redirected a million dollars that was going to go toward a median project. And they said, do that. Do what that better block did, you know? And so what we started to learn was when we went to our city council members and we went to our city staff, it wasn't enough just to have an idea and just lay it on the table and let them try to run with it. We had to get 90% of the way there. We had to myth bust if we had to do it on walkability, uh, on bicycles, on transit. And we had to get it there. And we knew if we did, that we had enough smart people at City Hall and our city councilors that they could get it over the finish line. But they needed our support. And lo and behold, that better block won American Society of Landscape Architecture Awards for communication. And that's where we started to understand, oh, that's the power of this project, is that it creates this whole different language that people start to use with their city and a whole different way of approaching community outreach or engagement for, for city building. 
that it's not enough just to uh, set up the planning table, that we actually have to get out there and plant the tulips a little bit. And so we just started doing this with everything, you know? We were just, when, anytime someone would come to us with an idea, <laughs> we'd just say, let's go try it, you know? So we had a group in town that wanted to do a dog park. And uh, we had a couple dog parks in Dallas, but there was only a few. And they said, we want a little community dog park, you know, just one in our neighborhood we can walk to. We only had these really big dog parks in Dallas. And so uh, we went, they'd gone to the city again with the idea. And the first response back was, well, you need 20 acres and it's going to be a million dollars. You've got to build parking lots for 75 people. You know, they, they had one idea of what a dog park was in Dallas. And they're like, no, no, we want the little community one. So we said, well, let's try it out. And so the group said, all right, let's have a fundraiser. And, you know, maybe in six or seven months, we can raise enough money to actually build this small dog park. And then, uh, you know, we have to go through the permitting of that. And, and you have to understand, Jason and I have a little bit of ADD. So we're just like, no, 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 let's just go across the street right there and just do it this weekend. You know, <laughs> the abandoned lot has been dumped on, you know, and, and, and make it look great. And it's, it's actually city property, but they're not doing anything with it, you know. And so we did, you know, and we made it look real official. You put a, <laughs> you make a sign that looks just like their sign. And, what, and I, had, I had some fence, I used to own goats, so I had, you know, in Texas, so I had some goats. But we borrowed their fence for the day, and uh, we, we found out, actually, that dog parks are more about people. There needs more space for people than dogs, because there was all this community gathering and people sniffing going on there. <laughs> I think there was some, some love matches made that day. <laughs> and, and more room for kids, too. The dogs, man, they, they could find out wherever. But um, now we've got a policy in the city where we can have these small dog parks. We don't have to have all the, uh, the large uh, stuff. And so we just kept finding places. We're like, where can we go in Dallas that is just the most desolate, uh, just harsh environment that no one wants to be in? And that's City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> We got I am paid. Anybody, y'all have I am paid here? I'm just this big, you know, the Death Star. This is where they filmed Robocop, by the way. <laughs> they filmed Robocop right here. And, I mean, this guy loves it, though. He's. <laughs> but William White, the famed psychologist, sociologist from, uh, from New York City, who was one of the first really studiers uh, of, of human interaction in the city, had already been to Dallas and he made a great plan back in the 80s about how to repair this place. And it was so simple. I mean, it was like, put food out, make comfortable seating, give people something to do. You know, I mean, it was like so simple. And it just had set on the shelf and never got taken off. So someone from inside the city emailed us and said, hey, you should try this. And so we did. <laughs> and we built our own furniture out of pallet wood and springs. <laughs> And those are our city council members out there playing in the, uh, uh, in the plaza. You gotta realize there's 1,800 employees in the city of Dallas, and this plaza is sitting there vacant most of the time. So we made things for kids. We brought a, uh, uh, a food vendor out, so we had to have crepes, right? Because Dallas is known for crepes. No. <laughs> and we took the old benches and we made those into checker sets, and lo and behold, here's all these employees coming out there where now they're really interacting with their city and they're getting out of the, the Death Star <laughs> and they're talking with people and there's ideas being formed out of it and there's businesses being incubated at it and then we always do a little something sustainable to, you know, the mayor's office is right here. I mean, y'all have a great mayor. We have one that sometimes doesn't, doesn't get on to issues really and we were trying to get sustainability issues with solar panels on some of our buildings so we just aimed these solar panels right up at his window <laughs> the sun was glaring back in the <laughs> I don't we didn't we didn't tell him that it was just running this little laptop right here <laughs> again we wanted to try these things we wanted to get we knew our community had these ideas and we just needed a stage to put them out on and so after this project this is actually when I got fired I worked at a big engineering firm. We'll just call it big engineering firm. <laughs> and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And so I'm going to tell you right now, is that if, you, if you're passionate about something, don't be afraid to get fired over it because it'll pay off too. Because my first clients after I got fired was back with my old firm. The city of Dallas said, you've got to hire that guy. We want to kick off our complete streets effort with a better block. <laughs> so we 
built a, a, a market, Las Ramblas style, right in the middle of our arts district on the, one of the busiest streets in Dallas. And we kicked off, and that's how the city of Dallas initiated their complete streets effort. They said, everyone go out and just experience this. That's what we're talking about. And it went swimmingly. We got our complete streets effort done through quickly. And then we started testing other parts of the city. We found out, you know, there's not one size fits all for repairing your city. Uh, this is a part of South Dallas that really just had been disinvested. It had great history. It had the Blues Palace over here. Dallas used to be known for, for music. Uh, we had Ray Charles there at one time. But we had to reinvent that street for the day. And we, we realized that you need to bring out the unique characteristics of your city. And so we had gospel choir and we had barbecue at that one, you know? So you, you bring out the things that, that you love in your city. And we started using the Better Block to fine-tune designs. So we're gonna rebuild a bridge there. And we said, well, we need more space for bicycles and we wanna have an overlook over the Trinity River. And so now it's gonna be designed that way. And the Better Block went viral and it's now been over, done in over 60 cities. Uh, folks are using this as a way to test ideas, uh, but more, they're using it as a way for the community to re-engage with the city, the city again. And not just be throwing ideas out, but actually getting out and testing them. And giving uh, cover to our policy directors, our council members, and our, uh, and our staff. Because when we get out there and try things, even in Tehran, it's already gone all the way to Iraq. <laughs> yeah. All right, Raymond. But if we're, tra we're trying these things out in cities, and mostly Midwest cities, now we're on the East Coast, uh, we're, we're doing more than just looking at the infrastructure. We're building the culture and the society and the, the momentum around these things. And I found that if you have beautiful women riding on bikes, you've cured everything for your city. That's, <laughs> that should be your number one grade. But now this stuff is legal. You can go out and do it. It's in the books. It's becoming part of the planning process. There's been a major shift in urban planning. And it needs you to get involved with it. For Guelph to reach its goals that it has, it can't be all top down. I know you folks have tons of great ideas. And you can't just voice them. We've got to get out there. We've got to try them together. We're going to learn from them. We're going to safe test them together. I love that. Safe fail, right? Because I've shown you a couple of our successful projects. We've had ones that I've learned so much from, you know? And if you don't just get out there and use the scientific method and try these things, you won't know. You won't know the full potential of Guelph. So thanks for having me, and uh, really good talking.